Hey everybody, it's Leisha from Caught by Design. Today, we're going to create a design for an apron using sublimation acrylic paint. For the project, you will need a sublimatable apron, sublimation acrylic paint, Some gel press petites, these small gel printing plates. They come in a variety of shapes. The set I have is a square, a triangle, and a circle. You'll need something to mount the gel press plate on. Now, if you have a stamp block that's large enough, you can use that. You can use uh, a plastic lid. Um, anything that this will adhere to. I'm actually going to use this acrylic circle that I had left over from another project because that way I can mount it to it and I can see through it. You'll need a brayer, some paper to put your design on. Now you can use regular paper, you can use tissue paper, but what I'm going to use is this tracing paper. It's what people use like for uh, pattern, tracing patterns if they're sewing or um, anything that they need to be able to sketch something large on. I want to use it because the apron is kind of wide and this paper is 24 inches wide and there's 50 yards in the roll. So that way I can use the width of it across the apron and I won't have to piece anything together but you could tape some regular paper together. You're just gonna need to make sure that whatever kind of paper you use, you can see through it because we're going to use these templates. These are available on my website as a free download and I'll show you how to use them just a little bit later in the video. I've got some offset squares, just a regular uh, square pattern, just rows. This one is for the triangles. And then this one also uses the square, but uh, it's in more of a chevron pattern. If you wanted to use the circle gel press plate, you would just fit it inside the square as well because all of the gel press plates in my set are three inches. Uh, you'll need some regular tape, a lint roller, some artist free protective paper, some artist free heat tape, or some uh, spray adhesive that you can use with sublimation, a paintbrush, some scissors, paper towels, and then you're going to need something to add some texture to your gel press plate. I just went on a scavenger hunt around my house to look for things that had texture. So I've got this ribbon that has kind of a basket weave pattern. Here's some more ribbon with a pattern to it. Here's some cording that has some texture. If you are a stamper, you might have some stamps you want to use. Uh, you could use bubble wrap, rubber bands, and I've got these embossing folders that would also work to add texture. So my apron is going to be kind of a fall theme. So I want to use this leafy patterned embossing folder. And I might use this embossing folder as well. And I think I might use some of this and maybe the bubble wrap. I don't know. I don't want it to get too busy. I just want to have some interest to it. So that's what I'm going to kind of set aside to use here in a minute. You're also going to need a heat source. It's recommended for the size of the apron that you use either a, a Cricut Easy Press or preferably a regular heat press. Press. That will allow you the room you need to press the design. Now you'll notice that I've protected my workspace, I've taken off my watch and my rings, and I do have on an apron to protect my clothing. 
the um, Artist Spray acrylic paints are like any other acrylic paint. If they get on your clothing and they're allowed to dry, they aren't going to wash out. And I don't want to accidentally sublimate my uh, watch band or anything like that. So I just take off my jewelry and then I've just got some butcher paper over my workspace. I'm going to use the chevron pattern to make my design. So I've printed off three copies of this and matched up the edges and taped them together. It's not going to matter that I cut this off because I'm just going to use it as a template underneath my tracing paper. You could stamp directly onto this paper. There's a chance that the lines might come off because I've made them pretty dark. Probably not going to, but I would hate to take a chance. That's why I'm using the tracing paper. So I would recommend that even if you want to use plain paper, you lay it over your template to stamp on and don't use this uh, printed paper, just in case. It's just a good idea. So you'll see that my apron is pretty wide. And I'm going to put my pattern right here along the bottom. So I've cut a piece of the tracing paper that's longer or actually wider than my apron. So I'll have room to position the design where I want it when I go to press it. It's also a little bit wider this way than my template. So that gives me plenty of room. So what I'm gonna do is just take the template to the tracing paper, just using regular tape. Now you don't have to use a template. You could uh, just do a, a crazy patch pattern, kind of like a crazy quilt. You could make up your own design. This is just how I chose to do it because I want this chevron pattern going across the um, bottom of the apron. Not, the, not all the way at the bottom, but just the bottom section of the apron. So once I've got that tape, I'm gonna turn it over. some of these things out of the way. I've already mixed up the Artist Spree paint. I've mixed the colors to some fall colors. Um, I've got kind of some different shades of orange here, some yellow. That's red with just a little bit of white lightning medium in it. Um, this is kind of a purplish red, and um, this is going to be more of a burnt orange or a brown. Now, if you're really picky about your colors, I suggest that you do some spot testing first. Just put this on you know, a piece of paper, paint a little bit on a piece of paper and apply it to a piece of polyester fabric or something to see how it's gonna come out because these colors tend to be really vibrant. I'm not so picky about the exact shades for this project. I just want kind of a fall variation. So that's what I'm doing. Now, if you need some help mixing the colors, Artist Spree has a color mixing chart available on their website. Now, we do want to be careful not to um, splatter the paint too much because that'll be on our transfer. But if we do, we can just trim it off. So I'm going to use just the square plate. You'll see it fits right down in that. And I'm gonna mount it on this acrylic circle. Like I said, that way I'm gonna be able to see right as we go. So I'll just take a paintbrush. You could use a craft stick or something like that, but I'm gonna use a paintbrush and I'm just gonna apply some paint to the light here. Then I'll take my brayer, kind of mix it up. Now you don't want to mix it up so much that it um, becomes a big glob, but you can 
mix it around. If you want to put something more on top of it, you can. Doesn't take a lot. And then, get a piece of, let me get a paper towel here to lay my brayer on. And then I'm going to just put some texture on this. So let's, let's use the leaf pattern first. So I'll do one stamp. And then I'll do a ghost print. And I'll probably put that over here. And then I'm going to repeat the process. That one, I may actually even um, stamp over again because it is a little bit light. If you're going to change colors in between, you'll want to wipe off your brayer. So that you don't transfer the colors. So I'm just going to keep having fun with this. I'm going to apply paint to the Gel Press Petite, brayer it on, add some texture, stamp, repeat, repeat. So here we go. All right, now it may look like a hot mess right now, but I think it's gonna be really pretty when we press it. So I'm gonna let this dry for just a little bit and I'm gonna rinse off my gel press plates, my paint brushes and all my tools, and then we'll press it and see how it turns out. While my paint was drying, I cleaned up all the gel press plates and the paintbrush and the embossing folders, anything I used during the uh, design process. I also replaced this bottom piece of butcher paper because I had gotten paint on it and I didn't want to accidentally transfer any to the apron while I was taping the design on. I also washed my hands really well. I've uh, Sometimes I've accidentally had a little bit of paint on my hands and then when I go to put the transfer on to the blank, I might accidentally, you know, transfer a little paint and it doesn't show up sometimes until after you've heat pressed it, and then that's always a little bit disappointing. Now, if you look at this, um, I've got some splatters here and some splatters here. So that is going to transfer if I leave it on there. So I'm just gonna take off the template. And if you're going to use heat tape, you're going to want to make sure you leave some margin around your design in order to tape it down. Now that's dry paint, but I'm going to try to get it off too, just so we don't get any flex on the apron that I don't see. But I'm going to go in like right here. There's a little fleck. The top is pretty good. Um, 
from where I was stamping. Like this area didn't get much over stamping or excess ink, but the bottom did because that was closer to where I was putting the brayer. I'm just gonna trim that off and you know anything you could trim right up next to it if you wanted to it's not really necessary but anything that's there is going to transfer so i'm just going to trim that off and i don't want to get it right up next to the edge because i do want a little bit of an organic edge to it I don't really want just a hard edge, but I also don't want any paint speckles. And right here, if this were further in, I'd probably trim it off, but it's actually going to overhang I think the edge of the apron so it's not going to transfer or it won't be there won't be anything for it to transfer to because it won't be on the apron. I also pre-pressed the apron just to give it a nice smooth finish and then I was I was planning on pressing it and then lint rolling it and I realized while I was pressing it I should have lint rolled it first because if you can see those little blue speckles right there, that's what happens when you have uh, lint or excess fibers on your fabric blanks. When you apply the heat to them, it turns those polyester fabrics, that lint, uh, blue. So I really should have lint rolled it, pressed it, and then lint rolled it again, which I'm gonna lint roll it again now, just in case it's got any more lint on it. But it's an apron, so I'm not gonna stress over it. But just keep in mind, because if this were say a pillow blank or a cosmetic bag or something like that, you would be very disappointed that you had blue speckles unless they were covered by your uh, design. So, because I used a chevron, this can go either way. We can put it, you know, like this, or we can put it like this. So, I'm just going to have to decide how I like it. Um, this is the top, the way I stamped it. Of course, remember, it's going to be reversed. And we do want to make sure it's pretty straight. And I think for this project, it would be maybe better if I used the... Uh, adhesive spray because that way it um, it will stay really smooth when I put it down and with the heat tape it, it could buckle a little oh, it just kind of depends you could use a lot of heat tape as well you could go either way I'm just going to decide where I want the design make sure it's you know straight and I'll use this adhesive now, it's best to use it in a well-ventilated area and away from heat. You don't want to use it next to a heat source because it is flammable. If you um, follow the directions, it's repositionable, but it's also a fast tack. So that's a, that's a good thing. So I'm going to shake this really well, and then I'm going to go outside and put it on the blank itself so that I am not using it in here in my workroom. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've sprayed my transfer. Decide where I want it. I'll smooth it down. Make sure it's straight. That's the nice thing about the spray, is because it's repositionable, I can just pick it up, and put it down.
Now to center it, I did measure down from here rather than from the hem. It looks like the hem is curved just a little bit. So you'll want to maybe um, even put it on. That's what I did. I put it on and had somebody look at it. So just to make sure it's straight and it's hanging like you want it. Once you've done that, you're ready to press. So I'm gonna take two pieces of Artist Brie protective paper. This does look kind of like the tracing paper, but it's not. It's a siliconized protective paper that will keep the uh, sublimation ink from getting on your press. So I'm gonna put a layer on the top and a layer on the bottom. Now this is gonna be the side that's up when I'm pressing. The only thing you want between the heat source and the transfer is this sheet of protective paper. You'll notice that the transfer is paint side down onto the blank. So we have the protective paper, the transfer, face down, blank face up, and another layer of protective paper. Once I press it, or for each press, I'm going to press for 60 seconds at 400 degrees, and then I'll do a little peak test. I'll pick up the transfer and see if it's bright enough, and if it's not, I'll press it for a little longer. But I think 60 seconds is gonna be really good for this. Your heat press may vary, so make sure to check your temperature. And, uh, you know, you may have to adjust your time a little bit, your temperature a little bit. All heat presses run just a little bit different. So I'll go over to the heat press now, press it, and be right back. I did do my peak test over at the heat press, and the colors transferred beautifully. So are you ready for the big reveal? I hope this project has inspired you to try the Artispree acrylic sublimation paints and the gel press plates, either the petites or the full-size plates. The Artispree products are a great way to uh, create sublimation designs without the need for a special printer. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.